Hello everyone, my name is Chen Chen Zhu. I'm the PhD student in ACES, the Composite Center in University of Bristol. My topic is about fiber spinning and characterization of natural polymer composite fibers with ionic liquids as benign solvents. Uh, I'm supervised by Dr. Samir Rahatka. The aim of our research is to develop an easy handling, eco-efficient, economic and environmentally friendly method to develop natural polymers such as cellulose, cotton, hemp and silk and the functional nanoparticles uh, and manufacture the continuous fibers with well controlled length, diameter and specific uh, properties as well as characterize the fibers properties using multi methods such as optical microscopy, FDIR tensile testing, uh, electrical conductivity measurement, SEM, as well as the wide-angle X-ray diffraction. Natural polymers are abandoned, sustainable, uh, eco-efficient, and environmentally friendly material. It's very cheap, only costs as little as $0.5 per kilo. However, they are insoluble in traditional solvents, such as water, ethanol, and acid. This is because the intro and intermolecular hydroxy groups inside hold the polymer chains firmly together side by side and are difficult to be broken by traditional solvents molecules. Here is the uh, network of the cellulose chains and we can see there's multiple uh, hydroxy groups inside. So the material we use in our experiment are cellulose and chitin. We use the cellulose with a degree of poly uh, polymerization of nine, uh, around 890, which was uh, uh, grounded from cellulose pump sheet. The chitin from snow crab was purchased from HMC Plus with a molecular weight around 1 million saw. Uh, here is the cellulose chemical structure and the chitin chemical structure. Cellulose is uh, well, the most abundant poly uh, natural polymer in the world and, ha and has very brilliant mechanical property. Cotton is the second abundant natural polymer in the world. Uh, it not only has excellent mechanical property, it also has very brilliant antibacterial property. That's why we choose these two uh, natural polymer as our raw material. So the traditional dis dissolving method of natural polymers has multi steps and use hazardous chemicals like strong alkali and acid, which is dangerous for handling human health and environmental environment. Here is the uh, cellulose processing method as example. So we can see uh, usually people will use NaOH and CS2 to dissolve the cellulose, which will be uh, which is very harmful for the environment. Ionic liquids are low melting point salt in liquid states, which only consist of cations and ions. So ion liquids can break down the hydrogen bonding in by our polymers, hence can dissolve cellulose, silk, and cotton. Ion liquids are less hazardous than traditional used solvents for processing of natural polymer fibers and can be easily recycled. That's why the ionic liquids are referred as green solvents to process natural fibers. The processing method we use for our experiment has four steps. First, we use a hot plate with magnetic stirring to dissolve our solution inside. And then we use a spinning equipment, include a extruder, a water bath and a winding draw. Then we merge the fiber in water to remove ionic liquids in the fiber com completely. Finally, we dry the fiber at room temperature. So here is the extruder we use. This one can electrically control the temperature from room temperature to 250 degree. And the pressure uh, is between 0 to 650 bar. The plunger speed can uh, change from 0 0.01 to 8 millimeter per second, and the winding speed 
is between 10 to 250 meter per minute. So here is the nano composite fibers with spin. It's very thin, and the finest fiber we we can spin the diameter is around 30 uh, micron. Our experiment has two parts. The first part is neat cellulose and cotton fibers. So FTIR analysis was used to confirm the completely removing of antiliquids from fibers. So from this uh, graph, we can see the FTIR spectra of neat cellulose, cotton fibers, and antiliquids. From the uh, glue curve, we can see the carbon-nitrogen bond belong to the antiliquid is not present in neat cellulose and cotton fiber spectra, which means that the majority of antiliquid has been removed from fibers completely. We did tensile testing on neat cellulose and cotton fibers, and here is the average string stress curves and the results. So the regenerated cellulose fibers has similar density and young modulars compared with cotton fiber. So it's around the density of the cellulose fiber is around 1.4 gram per cubic centimeter, and the strings is around 200 megabar. The young modulus is around 5.5 gigapa. The tensile strengths of neat cellulose and cotton fibers are nearly the same, around 200 megapa, but the young modulus of cotton fiber is nearly 1.4 times of cellulose fibers, which means that the, the cotton has more rigid structure than cellulose. The, the part two of our experiment is the cellulose carbon nanotube composite fibers. We dissolved 1%, 3%, 5%, and 7%, and 10% uh, multi-walled carbon nanotubes into the cellulose antiliquid solution spin composite fibers and characterize the fibers properties using conducti conductivity measurement, SEM, and X-ray. The nanotube we use is the multi-wall nanotube forest provided by Cambridge. The average outer diameter is around 80 nanometer and the length is around 1 millimeter. After modifying and sonication, the nanotube dispersed quite well in antiquities and the length of the nanotube is around 20 micron. So in the table is the conductivity result of the 10% cellulose carbon nanotube fiber conductivity. We spin the fiber under different extrusion speed with constant winding speed, as well as different winding speed with constant extrusion speed. We measure the conductiv conductivity of these fibers, and we find out that the increasing extrusion and winding speeds caused significant decreases in the electrical conductivity of the cellulose nanotube fibers. So here is SEM and X-ray patterns. The SEM can give us a directly observation of the nanotube dis dispersion in the composite fibers. So in figure C, we can see the fiber spin under lower winding speed, uh, the nanotube inside the fiber align nearly random. However, in the figure D, the fibers being under higher winding speed with constant extrusion speed, the nanotube inside align quite well. So this one, these two images give us an understanding saying that increasing the winding speed, the alignment of the, of the nanotube increase. And in figure A and B are the X-ray patterns of the fibers. The X-ray pattern can give us a, a method to quantify the alignment of the nanotube inside the fiber. So we can scan the density of the, the X-ray ring. Thus, we can get an understanding of how better the alignment of the nanotube is in the fibers. So the decrease in the electrical conductivity of the composite fiber were due to the alignment of the nanotube, which result in fewer contact between the nanotube in cellulose fiber matrix. So for the conclusion, 
We dissolve cellulose and chitin separately in antiliquids and spine continuous cellulose and chitin fibers of well-controlled lens and a diameter. The cellulose fiber has similar density and young modulus with cotton fiber. The tensile strings of neat cellulose and chitin fibers are nearly the same, but the young modulus of chitin fiber is nearly 1.4 times of the cellulose fibers. The nanotube can disperse excellently in antiquities and its alignment can be increased by increasing either injection or winding speed. The fiber's conductivity reduces at the increasing of nanotube's alignment. In the future, we will manufacture cotton nanotube composite fibers with different injection and winding speed like cellulose. We will also add different conductive failures into the cellulose and cotton solution for fibers of higher conductivity and mechanical property. I want to acknowledge Dr. Samir Rahatika, my supervisor, Dr. Christoph and Jin Hu Chen in University of Cambridge, who can, who are uh, who kindly support our nanotube, as well as in SQI in University of Bristol. Uh, if you have any question, you can contact me by email. Uh, my email is chenchen.ju at bristol.ac.uk. Thank you very much.